Hey, I'm Kevin. Today we're going to talk about the first 10 chords that you need to learn on the uke. The reason why and a couple of other tips and pointers about playing these chords and their functions within keys. So get yourself tuned up and let's get started. Hey, before we get started, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and click that alert bell so you know when the next video is coming your way. If you're interested in more learning resources, head over to allforyuke.com where we have a full searchable library of songs, song sheets, practice tracks, worksheets, and more. All for you, allforyuke.com. Before we get to our first chord, I want to clear up a couple of terms here. So, a little map of where we're going to be working today. The strings which you may or may not know the names of, but I wanted to go through those, are named G, C, E, and A. Our fingers are named with index, middle, ring, and pinky. And then our frets are named one, two, three, four, five, and so forth. So those will be the terms that I use to kind of direct your hands as we play these chords today. So in addition to that, I want to mention that what a chord is, is a collection of notes played together. So when you play a single string on the uke, like this, you're playing a note. Or if you hold down any fret and play a single note, like this, these are all notes. Now if you were to play a collection of notes at the same time, that's called a chord. So when I place my finger on a string here, and strum down and play note, 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 note. Now I'm playing a chord, which brings us to our first chord, which is the C major chord. So C major is played here on the third fret of the A string. And I really wanna make sure that I get up on my fingertip here. This is a big part of playing chords, is making sure that you can see your fingernail facing back at you and you're using good pressure with your thumb on the back of the neck. That's how you get that good pinch point when you play a chord. So our C chord is played right here on the third fret. Now this is a one finger chord. So when you play this, there's situations where you might use your middle finger to play this chord. Situations where you might use your index finger to play this chord. So with one finger chords, you have the option the typical way that you'll play this chord most of the time is going to be with your ring finger. So this is the C chord. If you learn nothing else on your uke journey more than the C chord, you're still in pretty good shape because it's a beautiful chord. So number one is the C chord. Number two is the chord A minor. So another term here that I need to clear up is minor. What is a minor chord? What is a major chord? Well, just very simply, a major chord like C Sounds very bright, happy, uplifting. A minor chord, like A minor, sounds very melancholy, slightly sad, a little bit uh, somber. And we play this A minor chord with our middle finger on the second fret of the G string. So here is our second chord, A minor. Typically, using our middle finger for this one, occasionally you might use your index finger for it as well. But this is a great starting point for the uke, is just being able to go from C to your A minor chord. So you have two chords there now. You could probably play some songs just with those two chords, actually. And a good little pointer here is to make sure as you're moving through your chords, you're always keeping your fingers in close proximity to the fretboard. You don't want them sticking out like this. You want your hand nice and rounded. You should be able to see all of those fingernails as you're playing on the fretboard. So we have our C and then we have our A minor chord. So work on getting good at going back and forth between those two chords before you go any further. Now we'll get on to number three. Number three is the F chord. Now the F chord is a pretty cool one to go on to next because you're already playing the first half of it. So as you hold down your A minor chord here on the second fret of the G string, to play an F chord, all you need to do is add your index finger to the first fret of the E string. So when we press that down and we strum, now we're back to a major chord and we have an F chord. 
Very important here, making sure again that you're on your fingertips. I'm going to keep driving that point home to you guys. Make sure your fingertips are nice and upright, your fingernails are facing you, and you're not touching the open strings so that they can ring out nicely because you need all of these notes to be played to get that nice sounding F chord. So now we have a C chord, an A minor chord, and we're moving right around the circle here. We can connect these three chords and probably play a lot of songs with these as well. So number three is your F major chord. So we've done a couple of two finger chords now. We're gonna do a three finger chord. So I'm gonna take you into our fourth chord here, which is going to be G7. So let's start off here with our index finger where we placed it for our F chord, which is on the first fret of the E string. And now with our ring finger, We'll place that on the A string second fret and our middle finger on the C string of the second fret. And this is now a G7 chord. So a G7 chord sounds like this. And you'll notice it doesn't really sound like a major. It doesn't really sound like a minor. It kind of has this bluesy kind of moody feel to it. So that's what a seventh chord is. So whenever you see a chord that has a seven after it, you're gonna kinda have this little moodiness to it. It might be major, it might be minor, but it's always a seven. So in this case, this is a G seven chord. It's a major chord and it's a dominant seven chord. Something that I always like to keep in mind when I play this chord is keeping a good tilt on my hand. I wanna make sure that I'm rotating my hand towards the headstock of the instrument here. And this keeps my finger spacing nice so I can squeeze all of these fingers in here to these two frets. Now we have the Hawaiian turnaround and we have four chords in the key of C. We have C, A minor, F, and G7. And before we go any further, you're gonna see a little graphic pop up on the screen here with a key chord chart. So I'm talking a little bit about keys now, and all that means is, is that there are chords that fall together within a group. And that's why I'm teaching you these four chords first, because now you can play a bunch of chords in the key of C, also means that you could play a bunch of songs in the key of C. A lot of times songs are just written with one key and they have the same group of chords that they use in different ways. So as I get long-winded here on the G7 section, I also wanna mention a two for one opportunity here. In addition to G7, I'm gonna show you the G chord. So the G major chord shares a couple of the same notes as the G7, but we're gonna flip it around. So we play the C string with our index finger, the A string with our middle finger on the second fret, and then we add our ring finger to the E string of the third fret, and we still keep our hand tilted here towards the headstock, and this is our G major chord. So if you listen to this one, very much sounds like a major chord. In comparison to the G7 chord, you can hear that little flip to that seventh sound, that little moodiness. So you have G major, and you have G7, which is also a major chord, but it's a dominant seven chord, so it has that moody, bluesy feel. So sometimes those are interchangeable, sometimes not, but two for one opportunity there to learn your G chord. So now you can do the Hawaiian turnaround, C, A minor, F, and G7. We're on our way to number five. If you're digging the sound of my uke, head over to allforyuke.com slash shop. You can have a Kala ukulele for yourself. When you buy your Kala ukulele through All For Uke, you're supporting us and we really appreciate it. Make sure you check it out. Concerts, sopranos, tenors, baritones, a wide selection of accessories, capos, and more. All for you, allforyuke.com slash shop. Number five is another dominant seven chord. And because we've already learned the A minor chord, as Bon Jovi once said, we're halfway there with this one. So playing the A minor chord, we have our middle finger on the second fret of the G string. To make this into a D7 chord, all we do is add our ring finger to the E string of the second fret. And now we have that D7 chord. Sometimes you will see this chord played with index and middle finger. Same thing. It's a situational decision though. So just depending on what chord is coming next, 
You can decide your fingering here. I tend to prefer the middle finger and ring finger because I feel like that's kind of puts you in a better position for most of the songs that you play using a D7 chord. So number five is a D7 chord. Goes nicely when you're playing an A minor with it, D7 with it, or even a G. So now we're starting to talk about some chords in the key of G. We covered a lot of chords in the key of C. Covering two keys gives you more songs, more opportunities to play. Well, if you've ever tried to learn the song Somewhere Over the Rainbow, you've surely encountered the next chord here, which is E minor, or as I like to call it, the little staircase. So the little staircase chord of E minor is a minor chord, so we hear this little somber sound to it, starting on the second fret of the A string with my index, my middle on the E string of the third fret, and my ring on the C string of the fourth fret. So this is a chord that you want to make sure, again, really staying on your fingertips. And a little trick here, a lot of times you're going to see the C chord coming before this E minor chord. So this is a situation like I talked about earlier where you might play the C chord with your middle finger like this so that you can rotate to your E minor chord. So this is a little bonus tip here for you, switching between C and E minor. So this E minor is a really nice sounding chord also in the key of G. So now we have a couple more chords in the key of G that we can play. So we've covered the D7 chord. Now we're gonna cover the major version of that chord, which is just D major. So D major, again, there's a couple different fingerings that you can use for this. The one that I prefer is middle, ring, and pinky on the G, C, and E strings here, all on the second fret. Now the reason that I prefer this fingering is because my pinky is a smaller finger and I have an easier time squeezing all of these fingers in on the second fret together. Sometimes you can play it with index, middle, and ring finger. And if you notice my hand here, again, is very much tilted towards the headstock of the instrument to try to keep that spacing because you're almost keeping your fingers vertical here across the fretboard as you play this chord. So you have two options for the fingering for D with the open A string on the bottom. I like this version here as well for getting to other chords easier, going from A minor to my D chord. It's pretty nice and also sliding into my G chord. So cool fingering, the D chord falls in the key of G. So now we have the G chord, the D, the D7, the E minor, the C chord. You have a bunch of chords. Now you can play a bunch of songs in the key of G. Number eight, we're still talking about the D chord, but we're talking about D minor now. So we have this D chord shape that we just did for number seven. We're gonna change this into a minor chord by flatting the third of the chord. It's another discussion. All we do to make this into a D minor chord we keep our middle and ring finger on the top two strings, but we put our index finger on the first fret of the E string and we pull our pinky off. Now we have a D minor. So here's a perfect example of major versus minor. Here's D major, happy. Here's D minor with one note change. Turns that into a little sad sounding chord. So D major, D minor. D minor is another chord that falls within the key of C. So now we have almost the entire key of C covered here in our first eight chords that you've learned. Now that gives you a lot of tools to play songs. Oh, you ordered a combo meal? Well, guess what? You got a two for one coming at you this time. We're gonna start off with an A7 chord. There's another dominant seven chord here, which is played with just one finger, another super easy chord. We just use our index finger on the C string of the first fret. This is a nice chord to use in the key of D. You can use it in the key of A, which is pretty cool. And to make this into an A major chord, to take it away from being a seventh chord, all we do is add our middle finger to the second fret here on the G string. And now we have A major. So there's the major chord, and here is the seventh version of it. A nice little chord combo pretty easy to move. All you have to do is pick up your middle finger and place it back down and you have two for one chords there. So that's the A and the A7 chord. 
more chords for you to have fun with. Number 10 is the E7 chord. Now the reason I chose E7 as our last chord here in the first 10 is because the E major chord is a chord that tends to come up in a lot of songs and it's a tricky hand shape to work with. So the E7 chord is a great kind of gateway to playing the E chord and a good substitute. So the E7 chord we play with index finger on the G string, first fret, middle finger on the C string of the second fret, and ring finger on the A string of the second fret. It sounds like this. And you can use that again as a substitute for the E major chord. So if you come across a song with E, you can always pop in this E7 chord. It's not gonna sound exactly the same, but it'll get you through it. And it's a good way to kind of start working on chords that are in the key of E, the key of D, and the key of A. So some of those keys that start using some more challenging chords, this is a good entrance into that. So we have our E7 chord as number 10. And a little bonus here for you, I'll show you the E major chord if you want to try this out as a little challenge for yourself as we finish up the lesson, is played by taking our middle ring and pinky, putting them on the fourth fret here of the G, C, and E strings, and then placing our index finger on the A string of the second fret. So it's a very tough position for a uke chord but you can do it, I promise. It just takes a little bit of time. So there's our E major chord, and here's our E7 chord. And those are the top 10 chords that you wanna start with on the uke. I challenge you to start trying to put together some chord progressions with these chords. Use your key chord chart and start figuring out some of the chords that fall within the key. So we learned a bunch of chords in the key of C, some chords in the key of G, chords in the key of A. Now as you start learning songs, you just have to fill in the blanks with a few of these chords that you haven't learned in this lesson. So take your time, make sure all of your notes are ringing out, make sure these chords are sounding nice and pretty before you move on, and also use them in progressions because playing chords, you're gonna have to use them in sequences and that's the way that it sounds great together. So my name is Kevin, I thank you so much for watching. Jump over to allforuke.com, I put together a worksheet with these chords, and I'll even put a couple of different variations on there for you, including finger positions, so you can work on these chords and add them to your palette. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Let's get